Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Leviticus 19. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Now notice, don't you see something here? Uh, let's see. Let's go back to just chapter 13 real quick. Chapter 13. And now this is going to be verses 1. 13. And 14. And 15. 14 is a long one. And 16 and 17 and 18 and 19 and they're all one book each of the chapter headings start off with and so it's not like chapter 18 okay we're done close the book and then 19 and it's conjunction it continues on it's all one book and you find the five books of moses are written like that too makes it one book and speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel. It's funny because hey, we heard today a guy talking about a church that they put themselves back in the law. And when you do that, what you're doing is you're substituting yourself for the children of Israel. The Roman Catholic Church does that. It takes the promises of Israel and applies it to them. That's why they bring in the kingdom. That's why they have swords and, and war. Bringing in the kingdom. That's why, you know, you call yourself a, a tribe of uh, Israel and you start a, a religion in America calling yourself after uh, Israel. The British Israelitism is that is taken from Israel. What they're doing is Israel has been specially blessed by God. And when the scriptures say that God is totally angry with them. During this time called the church age. So they'll say is God is totally finished with Israel. He's done with them. It's us now. And yet the tribulation period is called Jacob's trouble to whip his children back for their punishment. For their deeds chastising them. And then he'll give them the millennial kingdom and give them the earth all eternity. And what Gentiles are doing is they're stealing that promise from Israel. Now, I'll tell you what the danger is of that. I will curse them that curse you. Paul says, pray for Jerusalem, pray for the Jews, witness to them, try to lead them to Jesus Christ. Other than that, they are in anger of God the Father, but he's not finished with them. And say unto them, ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. That's the key verse. That's what all the law is about. You've got to be like me. Don't do this. Don't do that. Do right. He shall fear every man his mother and his father. Thou shalt honor thy mother and father. You're to fear your parents. And keep my Sabbath. That's not church age. Now again, I am not one of them people, Oh, Paul said it, signed, sealed, delivered, it's in cement, it's in gold. No, I believe the Old Testament, I believe the New Testament, I believe Matthew, I believe Revelation, I believe Leviticus, Numbers, and I do believe Paul wrote to the churches. And if you want a structure, you want a foundation upon Jesus Christ, and to do right is what Paul wrote to the churches, Paul does not speak anything about the Sabbath. The book of Acts speaks about the first day of the week. The Gospels speak about Jesus Christ rising from the dead the first day of the week. I am the Lord your God. 
and Ephesians 6, 1 through 4 about that. Turn ye not unto idols. So we're rehashing the Ten Commandments. And I don't understand is when it says turn ye, that's repent. That's repent. That's the definition of repent. Turn ye. Definition of repent, turn ye. Do a complete reversal turn from what you're doing. Do a reversal repent of not of doing idols. You're doing idols, repent, get right, don't do idols. So how does a church and churches who supposedly come from the Bible deframe that birth? And you find that in the New Testament. You're not to have idols. Nor make to yourselves molten gods. Well, they made a molten god. The calf. I am the Lord your God. And if ye offer a sacrifice of peace offerings, that's volunteered, unto the Lord, you shall offer it at your own will. You want to do it? Do it. No force. But in that rule that we read in Leviticus there, it shall be eaten the same day ye offer it. And on the morrow, leftovers. And if aught remain unto the third day, it shall be burnt in the fire. You don't carry leftovers to the third day. And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is, an abom it is abominable. It shall not be accepted. So here's an offering you bring to God. You're allowed to eat it that day. You're allowed to eat it the second day. But the third day, if you eat it, it's abominable. And when you see 18.22, thou shalt not be, thou shalt not lie with mankind as womankind. It's an abomination. It's a wicked sin to eat that on the third day. And everything you just did for God is rejected. Therefore, everyone that eateth it, still the peace offering, shall bear his iniquity, because he has profaned the hollow thing of the Lord. That soul shall be cut off from among his people. So, let's look at the law here. You bring a peace offering and you eat it on the third day. That is just as wicked as a man sleeping with another man. That's just as wicked as a man sleeping with another man's wife. That's just as wicked as murdering somebody. You violated what God uh, you violated what God has said. And that goes all the way to the foundation of mankind and his sin. What is the first sin? Now Eve changed the word of God, added, subtracted, and footnoted it. And then disobey the word of God by eating of that fruit that God said thou shalt not eat. Tampering with the word of God. So when God says, okay, bring your peace offering. If you want to bring it, it's a free will. This is what you're supposed to do with it. And on the third day, you eat it. Why does the Bible have so much in it about eating? Because that's the first thing. You realize... Hospitals and prisons and pains and tears are because somebody put something in their mouth. And tragically, tragically, there are many cases around the world where a child has put something in its mouth and it's caused death. And God has set forth an offering saying, you bring it to me, you're, you're allowed to eat it, but there's a restriction. And the restriction here is not death, you're cut off. When you die, you're going to go to hell. Now there's got to be something about this peace offering that, oh, I just got to have it. Oh, yummy, yummy. Oh, there's more? All right, I'll have it. Yum. Oh, great. Third day, you're not supposed to eat it, but oh, I got to have it. Something about it. Therefore, everyone that eateth it shall bear his iniquity, because he has profaned the hollow thing of the Lord. That iniquity. You say, what's the difference now in the church age? 
Jesus Christ bore our iniquity, Isaiah 53. With his stripes we are healed. Jesus hasn't died yet. He hasn't even been born. Verse 9. Okay, paragraph. When you reap the harvest of your land, we find this in the book of Ruth. Great story. And thou shalt not wholly reap the quarters of thy field. Boaz obeyed the law. Had he not obeyed the law in Leviticus, Ruth would have had nothing to pick. And then he would not end it up with a virtuous woman as a bride. Do you realize that? If he told to the law, we would not have the story that we have with the book of Ruth. She would have starved to death or ended up in someone else's field. And what he's doing is, you go through your fields one time. Oh, we forgot section B or whatever. Uh, southwest section. You don't go back and do it. You go through your field one time. You don't go back through it a second time. You don't go back through it a third time. You don't bring a, a mechanical device up to a tree and shake it blah, 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 and everything falls on the ground. That's a violation. Why? Thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field. Neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of the harvest. So you don't pick 100%. Thou shalt not glean thy vineyard. Grapes. Thou shalt neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. So see, God just told us through the Holy Spirit what it meant. Every grape. Make sure you get out there and get every right grape. No, that's a violation of the law for a Jew. Thou shalt leave them for the poor. Ruth was poor. Naomi was poor. Well, let's take Ruth out of the picture. Naomi was poor. They needed food. Boaz did not entirely sow, I mean, reap his field. So there was food there for Naomi. I'm leaving Ruth out for a reason. Naomi could have gone and got fruit. Poor people were there in the book of Ruth. They were getting food. And stranger. That's Gentile. God told that Jew, don't you dare reap every grape of that vineyard. That is for the poor and the Gentiles. Ruth was a Gentile. A Moabitess. Moabites were forbidden to go into the temple. Uh, the, well, the tabernacle. They would not help Israel. So they received a curse. Ruth is allowed to come. She... <coughs> <clears throat> she meets Boaz by Boaz obeying the law. You want to be right in the eyes of God? Don't you do your entire field. Leave it for the poor. Now they're not being deadbeats. You still got to go out there. The book of Ruth tells us she went out and, and gathered her sheaves. And the Bible tells us she beat out her sheaves and then tells us how much she got out of it. This is not a free handout. You still got to work and go do it. But there it is. And it leaves room for Ruth to come into the picture. Now imagine that. I talked to a guy today. We talked about the foreknowledge of God. God says, I know a woman called Ruth is going to meet a man. She's going to be the great, 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 Jesus Christ. I will have to leave her something in the Bible so she and Boaz can meet. I will leave them Leviticus chapter 19, verse 9 and 10. That stranger is Ruth. Isn't that remarkable? Again, if it wasn't for the law, maybe Boaz would have wiped it all out and had nothing for anybody. So there was a book of there's me, the stranger. You know what happened when the Jews rejected their Messiah? God says, okay, I'll leave some for, for the Gentiles. Paul says, I'm going to the Gentiles now. Let them get some great new wine.
the blood of Jesus Christ. How do you like that? When he was rejected out of the vineyard. Cast outside the vineyard. That's one of the parables Jesus said. The, uh, the father built a, a vineyard and he let it out to the husbandmen. And he sent prophets and they killed him. He sent his son they killed him. I'll lend the vineyard out to other service. Look at that. Leviticus 19, 9 and 10. The book of Ruth and Jesus telling us how what's going to happen when the Jews reject. What a marvelous Bible it is. Scripture with scripture. Ye shall not steal. So, going to someone's field, when they are harvesting, and God said, leave it for the poor and the stranger, and they do that like Ruth has done, that is not stealing. So, if you provide help for someone who's trying to make a living and their employer is make, making it so they cannot make a living and you've got to give them a little more help, that's not stealing. Now, they're deadbeat and don't do any work at all and get, okay. You're told not to steal. Well, our government has a trouble with that one. There are occupations out there known for stealing. Neither deal falsely. You're not to lie. Well, there's occupations out there in America. They are known for their lying. Neither lie one to another. You think God's against lying? The Bible records he is unable, cannot, and will ever not lie in three places in the Bible. And you get Christians that lie all the time. You get out of the pulpit. You get lying out of the Bible. We had a woman come up to her. Oh, I'm a preacher. I don't need any of that stuff. There's got to be something on that table you needed. You mean you can't grab a chick track and hand it to somebody? You're a liar. You're a preacher and you're a liar. Because there could have been something on that table. You got to be careful what you say with your big mouth. You have to see God's not mocked. What's over? Uh, no, I don't, what's over man? So is that you shall also reap. I don't know why the Lord wanted me to say that word. I was talking about where uh, in Matthew... Every word we're going to be held accountable. Neither lie one to another. Lying is forbidden in both testaments, by the way. You shall not swear by my name false. I swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and you lie and make your nose roar like Pinocchio. Neither shall thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor. That's lying. That's deceiving. Neither rob him. We saw that in verse 11. Steal. Now watch this. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night unto the morning. And we see this, another parable Jesus tells us, according to the Bible, you want to be a Bible nation? The law is for nations. The law is set up for a, a nation of people, not an individual, a nation called Israel. But if you want to be a Bible-centered nation, you don't wait for Friday to give them the paycheck. You pay them that day when they check out. There was a man that went out for to get workers in his vineyard. He went out, he found people idle. He said, Go in my vineyard, I'll pay, I'll pay you a penny. He went out at noonday and he found people, he said, Go in, I'll give you I'll give you a pay. He went out at four o'clock, he found people. He found people always the time was, was to check out. And then when they finished their work for the day, they came and they got paid. They didn't have a Friday pay. When you worked that day, you got paid that day. It's like these employment places. Work today, get paid today. That's Bible. That is Bible. And I got Matthew 20 on that. Thou shalt not curse the deaf. They can't hear you. But God can. You ever read, you ever read that verse? Thou shalt not curse the deaf. Well, I'm not going to cuss them out. I'm not going to cuss They can't hear you. Nor put a stumbling block before the blind. 
put something in front of his feet so he can't see it and he trips. That's what that is. But shall fear thy God. So if you're going to fear God, help the deaf and help the blind. And who did that? Jesus. Jesus helped them. And all the, the blind and the deaf people that helped Jesus. I wonder how many of the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the scribes did not just walk on by them. Jesus gave us another parable. He Leviticus 19 matches well. He said there was this guy that was beaten up and left on the side of the road dead. The priest went by. Woo. I'd walk around him. The Republican came, or the Pharisee came. And it's like our table at the at the flea market. They walk all the way around it. I don't have anything to do with that. But the Samaritan, the, the weirdo, the, the you know, we can't have anything to do with him, helped. And Jesus came and helped the poor and the blind. The poor. We already read the poor. And you know, they called the, the, uh, the publicans, they called them liars and stealers. There they are. Verse 11. Jesus helped them. And then the blind and the deaf, there they are. Jesus helped them. Isn't it remarkable? We see the story of Ruth and we see Jesus with the people. The liars, supposedly the publican, and the blind and the deaf. There they are. There they are. Zacchaeus says, Lord, if I if I offended anybody, if I stole any, I give forth those back. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. That shall not, thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness thou shalt judge thy neighbor. James 2, 3, and 9, Philemon, verses 10 to 16. And what this is saying? Oh, he's poor. He's come. We we gotta help him out. We got we gotta do whatever we can. No no no. If that guy is poor and guilty, he's guilty. Forget the poor. Oh, that guy is a sports player. He's a he's got a trophy and the gloves and everything like that. Oh, he's gotta be acquitted because he's famous. Oh, that person's on the movie screen, and oh, everybody just loves them. You, 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 you can't charge them. God says righteous judgment. You call a dog a dog. If they're guilty, they're guilty. If they're innocent, they're innocent. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. Now, I would call that fiction, lying. And it's a remarkable thing. I go to the bookstore right around the corner. It's a great bookstore, and you're in the you're in the Bible section. You're looking at the Bible stuff like that. Good, good, good resource. And then you turn around, and there is called a Christian fiction section. That's a talebearer. That's someone who's lying. Purposely lying. And we've already dealt about lying. And we come back and said, you're not to be a talebearer. You're not to tell stories. And then one of the things was, one of the occupations of the world is, you would have people who would sit around and they just do nothing but tell stories. Fairy tales. I take it as gossip. Gossip too. You're spreading lies about people and among the people don't go tell everybody that, that that's broad that tail bearer it's a liar and he's speaking and he's telling when we were kids they called us tattletales. tattletales neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor now that involves capital punishment you are not the lie to get your neighbor to be charged with murder or anything of the blood of somebody and lie about it. 
And that goes back, I should tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, and whatever motive you have, you will lie in court for your neighbor to stand guilty of the blood of somebody. I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. It's interesting that Jesus said if a man looketh upon a woman to lust after in his heart. Now you may not publicly and say I hate him. You may not publicly or privately sleep with that woman. But the charge is there because it's in your heart. As strong as God said, with the heart man believes on the righteousness. It's never head. It's never what you think. It's never with your mind. It's your heart. And there are people who are going to stand as Christians at the great at the judgment seat of Christ. And their heart is going to be judged. And they have never heard anything from their pastor. They have never heard anything. The fact is that you do not have to do it. You just have to put it in your heart. And you'll be charged with guilt. And from the heart will come the thoughts. We will be judged by our thoughts. And the great white throne judgment, people will be judged for things they haven't done as far as physically, but in the heart and in the mind. You got to clean your heart with the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus will tell, will tell us, you know, out of the heart comes murders, envies, and there is a long list. Paul speaks in Galatians about the flesh and the heart, all a long list. It's always a long list with that heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon it. You see your neighbor sinning? You're supposed to go up, put your arm around him in love and say, hey, you know what you're doing? It's wrong. Don't judge. They should be judged. James 5 2, I mean 5 20. Well, you ought not say that to a Christian. You ought not, you know, yes, you are. So they won't continue to sin. Now, you tell them what they're doing wrong, and that's up to them to do right or do wrong. We had that today with a gentleman. We gave them the resources. What you're doing is wrong. And plenty of scripture to follow with what we did today. And then that's up to him. But we did our part. We want him to do right. We don't want him to suffer loss. We don't want him to have ashes. We want him to have gold, silver, and precious stones. It's what we want. Thou shalt not avenge. Do unto others as others do unto you. Nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. Ooh, that's a hard one. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You take care of yourself. You take care of your neighbor. I am the Lord. The churches in the book of Acts were taking care of widows. Where no one else could take care of them. It's put on the brethren to help and take care of the other brethren. He shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. So you can't have your cattle working with the pigs, which is to them. You can't have the goats and the bulls together. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. You got tomato plants and cucumbers in your garden? Aren't you glad you're under, you're under grace? Because that would be against the law. You got your zucchini and corn. That's against the law. You got more than one seed in your home garden at home according to the law. That's illegal. Aren't you glad you're under grace? Aren't you glad that you can go out in your garden under this side of Calvary and get yourself a salad or whatever meal that you want of different, in, of different plants? We're going to see some more here. Neither shall thou... Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. Read your tag. 
10% polyester, 90% cotton. You're against the law. Aren't you glad you're under grace? God wouldn't allow 10%, 20%, 70% on your garment tag. It had to be 100% one clothing item. Wool, linen, whatever they were. You couldn't mix it. That's the law. That's how strict the law is. The tag on the back of your clothing had to be 100%. All of it. Or you're in violation of the law. And whosoever lieth carnally with a woman, that is a bondmaid. She's a slave. Betrothed to a husband. She's married. She's a married slave. And not at all redeemed. She hasn't been freed. Nor freedom given her. No one's paid for her. She's not free. She has a master. And she has a husband. She shall be scourged. Whipped. You say that don't sound right. That sounds. The implication is here that. She did not try to fight it off. She tried not to reject the, the proposal, but went with the man in the sexual leisure. She, she gave in. She wanted to. They shall not be put to death because she was not free. She's a servant. And the, the, the master... It's a master-servant relation. Other words, in the law, we see if a man and woman lie together carnally in nature, they both will die. This woman did not fight it off, but she is obligated in her beliefs to the man being her master. But then again, she didn't, you know. Many people have trouble with that verse. And he shall bring his trespass or so he's going to bring a sin offering to the Lord onto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, even a ram for a trespass offering. She, he trespassed her. He trespassed the servitude. He trespassed against her husband. And a ram was costly. Now remember, I mean. This is not a guy who's going to keep sleeping with his maids. Because we've already read in Leviticus, if you do it pre it, it don't bring that lamb. I mean a ram, yeah. Don't bring the ram. It won't be accepted by God. They got caught up in the heat of the moment. Paul said, you know, at least they burn in fire. No, burn in passion. Bring a ram for a trespass offering. The priest shall make an atonement for him. So there's there's the there's the man. She's scourged, and he's got to show up at the temple, and he's got to publicly announce that I slept with my maid. It kind of forced her, but she was willing to. So she's whipped, and he has to pay with an offering, a ram. For him with the ram of the trespass offering before the Lord for his sin. So it's a sin. Which he has done and the sin which he has done shall be forgiven him. So here's a sexual sin that does not require a death penalty. I haven't heard that too often. And she's married. And it's adultery. David was a ruler of the nation. And when ye shall come into the land. And shall have planted, now this, here's a good one, all manners of tree for food, a fruit tree, a nut tree. Then ye shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. There's that word again. 
It's amazing where uncircumcision and circumcision shows up. And this has nothing to do with a piece of flesh. Three years shall it be as uncircumcised unto you. It shall not be eaten thereof. So you plant in your yard to say apple trees. Fig trees if you're a Jew in that region. You plant them. You mark your calendar three years from now. I can't touch it. I can't eat it. The third year, I can. They're uncircumcised. They're like in the Gentiles for three years. I think that where I read it, as like a fruit, like an apple tree takes almost five years yeah. before it has fruit. You count the, from the year it first bears fruit three years. And it says, then you shall count the fruit thereof. It, it lays out the, the growing pattern of the plants. But, in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord thereof. Alright, so the fourth year, the fruits. Three years you're waiting, four years, the fourth year, that goes to God. Every fruit that's on that tree that year goes to the priest, goes to the Lord. And in the fifth year shall ye eat the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. So three years you wait. That's what the law says. Fourth year goes to God. That fifth year, you do what God told you to do as far as a Jew. Now this is where Gentiles want that blessing. God says you do what you're supposed to do and after five years, you're going to eat and you're going to eat well off those trees. Now that's a physical blessing. If you do everything I tell you to do. You know how hard that law is? Would you wait five years of those trees? Let's say you, the best fruit you love. You, man, you coveted. Uh-oh. You just sinned the Tenth Commandment. I really love those fruit. You just sinned. And are you going to wait five years? Are you going to bring that fourth year? You you pick that fruit and, oh, man. God says, I love a cheerful giver. And you're if you're aggravated that you got to pick that for me, that's not accepted. That's hard. Now, I'm glad God says trees because if I was under the law, had he said tomato plants, oh, boy, I'd be really. Tomato plants don't last five years. So I'm just saying. You see the temptation here? You see the, the thing to want to sin? Again, now ye shall not eat anything with the blood. It's amazing how he stuck that right in there. With the fruit trees. Now, I'm not going to get into it tonight. I don't know if we're ever going to get into it. Through the Bible, but strong scriptural proof shows that that tree in the garden that Eve ate from was not an apple, but it possibly could have been a grape tree, grapevine, with new wine. And wine is a type of blood in the Bible. Many people can say, oh, no, no, no. hey, I've been shown the scripture, I've been taught the lesson, I, I believe that by faith. Because now we're talking about trees and now we get back to blood. And there's only one thing in the Bible that blood is likened to and that's the grape. You shall not eat anything with the blood. Neither shall ye use enchantments. Hocus pocus in the name of Jesus Christ. And look what I got. Ali Ali oxen free and a rabbit comes out of it. Whatever. God says no. And he puts that with eat in the blood. Nor observe times. 
Ooh, it's Thanksgiving. It's Black Friday. It's Christmas. You say, well, the Jewish people had their holidays. Yeah, they had their holidays by the Bible, by the Word of God, and nothing else. They were not told to celebrate Bell's birthday. See, the Jewish people, it was called holy days. Not We changed it to holy days. We made the Y and I because we like to think of ourselves. Hey, I just thought about that. I like that one. You shall not round the corners of your head. This is a heathen practice. And when you want to see this thing, you go look at old pictures online in the internet of monks. And it's it's like a upside down platter. It almost looks like I forget what the name is, but the Jewish hats, the beans. But it's not a hat, it's a hair. Martin Luther, if you look at pictures of him, I think well, I think he had the that rounding of your heads. Neither shall thou mar the corners of your beard. I don't understand what that one is. But what God is saying to the Jew is, I don't want you to do what the heathen are doing because I don't want you to look at the heathen. I don't want the people to see you and the heathen together and say, oh, I can't tell them apart. I want God to say, if you and the heathen are staying together, that guy's Jewish. Well, how do you know he's Jewish? Look at his hair. Because there are Gentiles that have the same color skin as the Jews. He shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. Okay, I'm going to go with this with, with the tattoo again, and nor print any marks on you. The number one tattoo that there is worldwide is the skull. And what they would do, this practice is here, when somebody would die, they would cut themselves. They would shed their blood. Does that sound familiar? It's an imitation of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And my daughter got me the other day, and this one, print anymore. I, I took the, 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 I was fooling around with her, and I took a stamp pad and stamped her hand, hand and she said, Dad, isn't that printing marks on me? And I started thinking, like, yeah. And then I said, well, don't they do that if the, they put a mark on your hand? And I started thinking, yeah. Print any marks upon you. Not only are we going the form of tattooing, but we're also going just to put a mark on your skin. That you can go into this place. And usually those places are worldly and carnal. But we're also getting that Jew, the fact is, get away from marking because there's coming a mark one day. And you do not want to receive that mark of the Antichrist. Don't even think about it. And then don't worship the dead by cutting yourself. That's a heathen practice. I am the Lord. Do not prostitute thy daughter. And that's famous over in Asia. They will prostitute their daughters. They will sell their daughters for money. It's sick. But it is true. To cause her to be a whore. Okay, there's the definition of whore that man has. But since Genesis 1, we've seen that word whore come up as worshiping idols. Selling yourself away from God to serve idols. But here's the practice whore is here's a woman selling herself for sexual gratification to others and God says don't do it fathers don't make your daughters sell their bodies out lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness whoredom is wickedness turn your daughter over to sexual gratification is wickedness I think that part of the law we can we can obey too not under law for salvation, but keep my daughter pure and holy. I think that'd be right. I think I could go with that. I think not stealing, not not being uh, uh, false accusing, not being a tattletaler. I think not eating blood. I think this stuff, I think there's a lot in this law here today that I can obey as a Christian saved, not by the law, but, you know, it'd be a good practice for me in character. 
I'm not under the law, but some of these things I can look at and say, okay, Sabbath, that can go out. But, you know, I should give my body a rest at least once a week. Because we're going to come back to Sabbath in a moment. And if I'm going to stay in the courtroom, I'm going to say, so help me God, I'd better tell the truth. You shall keep my Sabbath, that's not Christian. And reverence my sanctuary, that's not Christian. Today, that's, that's Christians follow that one. I love my church. I love my pastor. What about Jesus Christ? Oh yeah, him too. I got the best church in the world. Really? We're in the Laodicean church age. God says you make me sick. How'd you end up with the greatest church that God says, I don't like it? And then read it. The, oh, we are, we're great. We're wonderful. How great we are. Yeah, you're matching the lads to see in church age. It's not about the church. It's about Jesus Christ. I am the Lord. Regard them, regard not them to have a familiar spirit. That's, you know, you want to get a touch of the dead. Grandpa's died, you don't know where the will is, so we'll go sit at a table, old hand, mm, mm, Grandpa, where are you? You don't do that. Or you, Ouija board, Ouija board tarot card. I always like when there's this woman over here, she's got the, her little tarot card. I'll poke my hand in there and say, did you know I was coming? <laughs> she always gets so mad at me. And then what I like when you see these, these, these fortune teller places and they're all closed up, it's like, didn't you know? It just shows they're liars. And this is the spirit world. Uh, King Saul went after the spirit world to get hold of uh, Samuel. Neither shall ye seek after wizards. Uh, I think there's a book and movie series about that. And if you really want to be interested in how bad this is, this movie, Mr. Potter or whatever his name is, Harry Potter, if you know families that Christian families in your church and other churches, I've done this, and they got children, look up their children's uh, Facebook, and then look at what books they like. Christian, I'm not talking about unsaved. I'm talking about Christian family. Look at their children, the books they like. I guarantee the name will show up 90% of the time. And a couple of times I went to the parents. I said, you know, your, your children say they like Harry Potter and all. Like, yeah, what's wrong with it? Oh my God, don't you read the Bible? God says, wizards, neither seek after wizards. That means don't go to the movies and don't go to the bookstore and buy the books. Don't go off to Oz. The movie Oz is against the Bible because she goes off to see Oz. And he's a wizard. To be defiled by them. You are involved with that magic. You are involved with that wizardry. You are defiled by God. I am the Lord your God. Is he your God? Is he your Savior? Don't be involved with that mess. That wickedness. Thou shalt rise up before a hoary head. That does not happen today. You treat a man with respect. You're sitting somewhere. There's chairs. There's not enough seats. And a man with gray hair comes in. You get off your seat. You bow down, sir. Have they been in the military? You know that? Thank you for your service, sir. Here, take my seat. Honor the face of the old man. And fear thy God. There's no fear of God, so there's no respect to the elders. I am the Lord. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, Gentiles, ye shall not vex them. But the strangers that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you. Oh, Jonah and Peter. <laughs> and thou shalt love him as thyself. For ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. Notice how he keeps saying, I am the Lord your God. I am the Lord your God. Do it for me. You shall do no unrighteous judgment. We saw that in verse 15. It's repeating itself. Verily, verily. Repetition. So this judgment 
is meat yard in weight or in measures. Adjust balances, just weights, just ephod, just hen, shall ye have. Now these are all the measurements of the Jews in the Bible. You're not to have tear weight. You know, weigh the, the carton and you end up paying for the carton. Everything, the business here is what it's saying is to be honest. And my wife has told me many times she, she's had in her lifetime where she's gone to get a gallon of gasoline. She's finding out she didn't get a gallon of gasoline. That's wicked. Nine tenths of a cent of a penny. That's wickedness. It's not just. It's not right. And when you go to a store or a marketplace and you're going to get a tomato and, and it ought to be that amount of pain uh, for a tomato. And then when you go to the meat department and you get yourself a chicken. And that chicken says two pounds. That's not two pounds of meat. That's two pounds with a bone. You're not getting two pounds of meat. You're paying for the bone that's in it. So you're to do an honest, correct, standing before God balances. And this also goes to the law court because in the law court of America, what is the symbol of the justice? You've got a woman holding balances and they're supposed to be even. You don't cock it to the rich. You don't cock it to the poor. You don't cock it because they're, they're famous. You don't cock it because they're in politics or movies or whatever. So it's supposed to be balanced out. We got the standard and we got a metric system. God says, no, that ain't correct. You got to have a standard or you got to have a metric. You can't have both. You're getting messed up. Which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe all my statutes. And we haven't finished yet. And all my judgments. And do them. I am the Lord. So God is setting forth to these people called Jews, I've got regulations, I've got rules, and you're going to follow them, or you're going to suffer the consequence. And when they didn't do them, and what happened? God called Nebuchadnezzar and said, listen, just take them out of the land. They're not doing right, they're not listening to me, they're doing everything but. Just bring them to your homeland and kill a whole bunch of them and burn it all down. And then Jesus comes and they're all messed up as a nation and they're not doing right. They're not obeying the scriptures. They put Jesus on a cross and he sends out his, his servants in the book of Acts and they won't believe. And they say, okay, fine, we'll go to the Gentiles. But oh boy, when I get back to you Jews, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble. And it will be trouble. Get used to the, don't put those marks, don't get used to those marks. Because there's coming a, a, a tattoo in the in the tribulation period. You don't want that. You don't want that mark. And as far as anybody who's got a tattoo and has not innocence. Innocence, we already read that. Now if you go out and you're a Christian, you get tattoos because it's cool and all that, and you've already know what the scriptures say, well then now you're doing it because you want to do it and it becomes sin. A lot of people I knew who before they were saved, they got tattoos in the Navy and Army and stuff like that. You didn't know. Plead the blood of Jesus Christ, say, God, I'm sorry, and then move on. But as a Christian, don't do that stuff. Don't lie no more. Repent. Get right. Plead the blood. Guy today, oh, I just keep on going keep on playing my music. It's wrong. And no matter what, God's not gonna bless what he says is wrong. No way, no how.